Hello, and ni hao, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to Sunday Tea Book episode three. three. Uh, we're super excited to continue with our uh, exploration of Lu Yu's classic of tea. Uh, we hope you're just as excited. We have got a super awesome, exciting uh, episode in store for you today. Mm, and we're having some uh, Yue Guang Bai, mm, a yes. kind of a Bai Mudang grade white tea with us, and so. Let us know what you're having in your cup. I'll get to brewing. Yeah, let's have a look at that tea. There it is. Uye Guang Bai is such a pretty tea. Mm. Uh, I love the stark contrast of the dark, which should give the Instagram oh, yeah. folks a little look too. The, there's the dark sort of blackish, deep, deep, almost black leaf with white. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful tea. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to sipping that. So before we get started, uh, while Jen brews up the tea, I'll give you a little primer for those of you that are new. Uh, what is Sunday Tea Book? Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I sit down with you guys live and we look at a book, paper, or an article that is uh, obscure, not available in the West. Maybe it's not translated or maybe the translation leaves a little bit to be desired. And we go over it and um, demuddle it, clarify it, uh, translate it if it's never been translated. And that is what we do. So you might ask yourself, well, why would you, why would you translate that on a live session? Why wouldn't you just post that on your website and make it a resource? Well, number one, we do. We do post the translation on our website. You can check the link down below. Today's chapter is there. If you want to follow along, check that out. Mm -hmm. um, but over the years in working with Jen and learning about Chinese tea, there's so much nuance, so many questions come up during translation, during the the sort of getting from the one language, the one culture, the one environment into the other, that it would be a terrible loss if we just posted the finished product. So we decided, what the heck, let's do, let's do these live. We've done, mm. this is our third endeavor in Sunday Tea Book. Our first endeavor was China Tea by Jen Li Wu. Our second was uh, Tea Classification in Theory and Practice by our uh, amazing tea sage person, uh, Chen Chuan. And now we are on the classic of tea, which is, of course, probably the best known ancient Chinese work in the West, for sure. Yes, yeah, so uh, I, I think you. it's one of the guessing. most uh, famous tea book, yeah, because yeah. when we talk about doing books, that's what everybody is suggesting. Yeah, so we had tons of suggestions, and here we are doing it. We're up to chapter three. Um, so for those of you on Instagram, coming up just after we do our intro here is going to be tea trivia time. We're going to sign out of Instagram, so you better jump on over mm -hmm. to YouTube Live where we are going to be having tea trivia time, and then we'll be diving into the classic of tea. You do not want to miss that. Mm -hmm. And um, but before you head out of Instagram, uh, can can they give us a thumb up in Instagram or what's like? Can they like this video or something? Yeah, I guess so. So like the video. <laughs> Whatever you guys do in Instagram land, do that. That makes that makes the video look. Hey, this is a good video. You should check these people out. Do that. YouTube people, if you already know this is going to be awesome, hit the thumb up. If you want to wait till later and see how we do, that's totally cool. Totally cool. But don't forget till later. Hit the thumb up. Of course, the um, and as I already mentioned, today's book is the. Uh, I should mention the other way to support the channel besides a thumbs up is I always publish the teas we're going to be drinking. We always publish them before they're out. So we've got a bunch of episodes. If you look onto our uh, YouTube channel, you'll find all the future episodes and all the teas that are coming up. If you want to really support the channel, you can head on over to our website and pick yourself up a little, a little uh, Sunday tea book tea pack. Get yourself lined up and sip along with us and share your tasting notes. Not only would that be super fun, but it'd be really helpful for us. So mm. you can check that out. And now... I guess the Instagram habit is wave. Wave back. Hello, Instagram. <laughs> I haven't used uh, Instagram Live for a while. Uh, oh, I see Eric. Hello. And... Uh, Ferran. 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 Okay. I think maybe a, a new... Different. Welcome, Ferran, from Germany Ferran. again. Germany. Oh, Rainer. Oh. It's Rainer. It's Rainer. Hey, Rainer. Welcome oh, back. you can tell. Uh, he said, hello from Germany again, Rainer, oh. smiley oh. face. Okay, okay, I missed that. Oh, and he is about to having some uh, Liu Bao. Mm, yummy, yummy, yummy. And Eric is having some Korean tea. Oh, lovely, lovely. Nice. I can smell this. Nice. This tea, I don't know. So we'll introduce today's book a little bit, the classic of tea. Yes, yes. I just want to mention, I wasn't going to like spend too much time on the tea, but when mm. I brew that, it's really sweet. I can smell the sweet, which I don't right. remember saying 
Don't remember the sweetness of the tea yeah, was so a common. Corn, almost a corn sweetness. Right? Which is a little bit of a bad memory, a sad oh. memory for me because we lost that corn. Right. We just had some corn go you bad. You say corn, I feel like it's a fresh, overripe apricot. Mm. It has that uh, uh, stone fruit. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Key word is overripe somehow. That overripe the skin. Like if you smell mm. that skin, the stone fruit skin. That's a little bit of that pungent sweet maybe. Am I? Not pungent. It's a uh, overly mm. sweet. Like you feel ah. like it can be fermented to some kind of a uh, alcohol or wine kind of <laughs> that sweetness. It's pretty like a. Uh, it's not like intensity of a sweet in terms of level. It's not like a booming, but the intensity of the sweetness in it. Yeah, it's really it's focused. Uh, huh? really, yeah, that's why I keep saying over like right. Awesome. It is anyway, uh, super refreshing. Mm, I forgot how good this tea is. Anyway, just a quick uh, uh, breakdown of uh, what book we're doing. Yes, classic tea, but it's not just my translation. Uh, it's uh, actually Mr. Wu Jianong's translation, mm -hmm. his uh, signature, one of his signature book in his later life uh, called uh, The Classic of Tea Commentary and... That's Mr. Wu then. What did I say? Oh, Narrative and Commentary. I translated the name. I don't think it's published in English. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Wu Jianong is the founding father of China's tea, modern China tea industry, mm. and a very, very well-known tea schooler. Mm -hmm. So this is a book that he spent uh, many years writing, researching with lots of uh, reference, very, um, very prudent uh, writing techniques and skills with lots of other prominent tea experts uh, help editing, uh, proving, and um, you know, contributing to this whole book. So this book is considered the uh, foundation uh, of understanding the classic of tea. And yeah, it's pretty much the authoritative interpretation, right? Because of yeah. it's not just Mr. Wu Junong, but so many tea experts contributed to exactly. this. Mm. So it's a very valuable tea and it's a um, you know, like for anybody who wants to understand the classic of tea, I think this is a great, uh, uh, the first step. Yeah. And uh, like our previous ones, which is more of a translation translation, this mm -hmm. one is, a, we will have the translation on the website, but in the conversation, in the live chat, we'd, better, uh, we'd love to fill in some gaps between the, the ancient and the modern times. Right. And uh, what's the difference, what's the nuance to bring uh, people read a little bit more into the text of what Louis right. said. So it's more useful to modern uh, tea Readers, lovers. right? Because yeah. the, the translation, if you go there, you'll notice it's, uh, it's not really a narrative. It, it, it's a different style of writing. So the, the sort of meat and potatoes are found here, right here, right now in the live. Mm. And you've got the uh, something we tried to stick pretty true to the, uh, to the text when we translated yes. it. Yes. And today, oh, hi, Igor. Yeah, Hello. I saw Igor was here. Hello. And today we're doing chapter two, tools. Oh, super, super fun. Tools, guys. Initially, initially, when I read the tools and how, when I just had a glance of that, I'm like, oh, this will be so boring because, you know, if you go to the kitchen, this is a wok, this is a knife, this is a, a cutting board. What's fun about that? I was a really, I was like, oh, this must be an awful chapters to translate as well as to talk about. Like, what can I talk about? But it turns out I was totally wrong. This is such a fun chapter that I didn't expect. So, so that's promising because I mm. knew I would love it. But if it, you found you love it, this is going to be super exciting. So just before we sign out uh, with the folks on Instagram, so Instagram folks, dive over to YouTube so you can enjoy coming up tea trivia time. I'll also remind once more about the, uh, maybe if you're brand new to, uh, to Sunday Tea Book and the classic of tea here today. There's a couple really good video resources linked down below. We've got a, a Lu Yu classic of tea primer. We've got a Tang Dynasty primer because we're talking about 1200 years ago. Get your brain kind of into the mindset. 
and Jen did a really fantastic video on uh, the Chinese language and sort of some of the little uh, traps and pitfalls that, 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 crop, that we've seen crop up. So check those out there, link down below. And I also remembered for Wu Jiwanong, I did a, I think it's called Chinese Tea 101 or something like this. Uh, uh, and I, really? I talk about, I mean, the whole video is not about Wu Junong, but I cover yeah, yeah, some yeah, of these really them. great tea people. So I'm going to put the link to that down um, below, this particular video. So check those out later when you get a chance. Mm. Um, for those of you who joined us a little later, don't forget to let us know what you're sipping. Uh, and of course, you can always uh, find out what we're sipping by looking ahead and grab some of those teas off of our website. So uh, I'm going to say bye-bye to Instagram. Bye-bye, Instagram. I'm going to pick you up. Whoa, shaky Instagram. Mm. And I'm going to have that awkward moment. <laughs> Answering Eric's uh, question about uh, what tools uh, do I mean in this chapter is tools to make uh, produce tea. Mm, tea good clarification, tools. right? Yeah, it's not the tea table tools. Mm. It's a processing tool. So really, really cool stuff. And the stuff we maybe don't see every and day. Weird. And weird. And weird and fun. <laughs> All right, guys, so we had a little technical difficulty last week, so I hope, there's a, I hope there's just the right amount of nervousness and trepidation in the crowd, suspense even, as I swing on over to, let me just get all my little buttons pressed, producer and star, co-star, I should say. <laughs> okay, let me go back over here, touching onto that, and it is, folks, tea trivia time. Yes, all right, folks, it is tea trivia time, the time you've all been waiting for. You can see the countdown on the screen. I can see the countdown on the screen. screen. I'm super stoked because had a little technical difficulty last week and tea trivia time didn't work out. So here we are back this week coming on full force. What's the deal? You're going to see a question on the screen. Simply enter the number and press enter. That makes it simple for the computer to get the right answer. Let's rock and roll. It's time to have some fun. Your browser does not support this. Anyway, the original character for T was, was it one, that one, two, that other one right there, three, yet another character, or four, that character right there. Now, you might be thinking, why didn't I say the characters out? Well, the reason is, she's checking out the characters. I don't want to give it away. Sorry. She's making, also making sure the right answer exists. I hope it does. I think it does it. <laughs> hey, you're right. What happened? Oh, no. No, no. They look right. I don't know, maybe yeah. the, uh, maybe the, uh... Two and three look identical. Yeah, they're not supposed to, though. Okay, just pick one of those and you'll get a right answer. <laughs> I think the, uh... All right, so the answers are... We're checking out your answers, but, uh... It, Ayo, they I forgot a bro. Oh, they were darn. not. All right, well, that's a minor technical difficulty. At least we're rocking and rolling. I see some answers coming in for one, some answers coming in for two. I don't know what the right answer is because it looks like the right answer was three, but it looks identical to two, but it's not supposed to. I'm going to check and see if that was my fault or if that was some sort of a encoding difficulty. So apologies for that uh, false start question. And uh, that's okay. We're going to go on here with question two in a few more minutes. But we did talk about this in episode one of, uh, I believe it was episode yes, one or two, one. we talked about the origin of the character and Lu Yu talks about the origin of the character in the context of the origin of tea. Very interesting chapter. Make sure you check it out if you haven't already. All right, question two. Transplanting tea plants was commonplace in Lu Yu's time. Is it one? Yes, it was the main way to start a tea garden. Two, yes, it was done frequently in the south. Three, no, it was very uncommon. Or four, it was neither common nor uncommon. Thank you. Transplanting tea was commonplace in Lu Yu's time. So as always, I like to do a little combination of content related questions and I like to throw in a few just uh, curveballs from nowhere. So uh, kind of mix it up, review the content. Again, I'm not reviewing to make sure that you guys are, are getting this, but if that's what you like, you have that option. But it is fun to just kind of review and kind of cover our content. All right. All right, sneak your answers in. The time is running out. The computer is starting to calculate now. I see some answers rolling in for number three. I see uh, another answer for two. And indeed, the answer was three. No, it was very uncommon. In fact, you could probably go so far as to say that it really wasn't done. Um, little trick question there, a bit frequent in the south. Make it sound like, oh, that makes sense. Maybe someplace did that. 
just a trick question. They did not transplant. It was even used as a marriage gift because of its uh, fixed position. It was kind of stuck in the ground and a, sort of a representation of a, not a gift, right? A marriage mm -hmm. token, a representation of a lifelong bond. Oh boy, I love this tea. It really turned better, huh? really even better than before. They Hang on while I read okay. question Sorry. three. <laughs> Wild grown tea in the classic of tea could mean so Lu Yu refers to wild tea or wild grown tea. So what could that mean? Could that mean one, the tea was grown on the mountain or the tea was left on its own to grow? Would that mean number two, the tea was grown in an unpopulated region of China? Would it mean three, the tea was grown in a dangerous place in China? Or would it mean four, the tea was actually a carnivorous plant? Which one would it be? Right? I think it's obvious we're here to have fun, guys. It's obviously number four. I remember my first tea trip in 2018. I almost fell victim to a carnivorous tea plant. I can't tell them I'm kidding yet because they might think that's the answer. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Time to get your answers in. L last few seconds before the computer grabs on to your numbers and tabulates your response. And indeed, uh, who got that right? I can't see the... Uh, Logo, but I see that somebody got it right. Tea, it meant tea that could have been grown on the mountains or it could have been just left on its own to grow. It could have mm -hmm. been the difference between mountain tea and plains tea or the difference between a cultivated, heavily maintained garden and a wild and crazy garden. Mm -hmm. Not entirely sure. But they're both correct in the context that it's presented in that that tea is better, wild. Good, good work, everybody. And thank you for guessing four. I'm so stoked. <laughs> All right, the population of Chang'an, the capital city of the Tang Dynasty, was, was it one, 750,000, two, 5.8 million, three, 10,000, or four, one million dot people. People, not dollars. Pop culture reference. She might be confused. Oh, Eric said a boo. Boo. All right, so this is a guess at the population of Chang'an. Again, this is uh, another, another little something we covered in one of the primer videos helps set the context for just how, well, I don't want to give too much away, do I? <laughs> I can't say too much right now. We'll talk soon. You're so sneaky. I'm very sneaky. I'm just really, really excited about this tea. I'm really glad. It is yeah. really, really thick and uh, delicious. The mouthfeel and is that, wonderful uh, too. I don't remember it being so sweet. I just love that how through when we first tasted till now. Ooh! Way to go, guys. You all got it right. When that happens, we do this. Is there a sound? I think so. <laughs> I don't know. We couldn't hear it, but I think there was Maybe sound. there is no sound, just the Way to act. go, guys. If there was no sound, then that all you get is my shaky head. But way to go. I see tons of folks got it right. Seth even got it right. I'm going to give you the point, Seth, but you just came in a little bit late, or maybe the lag caused that to be a little bit late. Maybe you entered your answer 10 minutes ago, for all I know. But the answer was 1 million. This was an amazing city, a real cultural hub uh, of the Tang Dynasty, and of the really the world at that time, I can say, understanding that the world was very compartmentalized at that time. We didn't have airplanes, etc. All right. In our garden, my garden, Jen's garden, our garden, lean in, lean in, come on, towards me, there we go. In our garden, okay, we're not talking about Lu Yu for a moment here. I told you the questions are pretty wild and crazy. In our garden, the largest tomato cultivar is, is it one, the sweet milk? Two, brandy one. Three, black tomato, not black tea, black tomato. It's called black beauty. Black beauty, ooh, okay, so three is black beauty, but just enter three, if you think it's the black beauty, or four, the big mama. What is the largest tomato cultivar in our garden? <laughs> Eric's going with the big mama. That's a solid guess. It has the word big right in its name. Take a guess, folks. If you're, if you're following us on Facebook or Instagram or uh, Twitter, you might, you might know this. You would probably know this. So that's a little encouragement. Good guess, everybody. It looks like uh, a couple of you got brandy wine. They are absolutely huge. They're like the size of... Uh, our faces, which are the same size, <laughs> and uh, the big mama is big, but not quite as big. So way to go. The computer is going to round up all your answers and present a leaderboard in a few moments, and then we're going to dive into Lu Yu's Classic of Tea, Chapter 3, Tea Production Tools. I'm so stoked. This is Chapter gonna be so 2. Cool. 
Chapter two. Chapter two, episode three. Do you? Get a mixed up. Oh, I think I asked. All right, so way to go. It looks like uh, Igor came in first with three right answers. I know Seth had a, one more right answer than we posted for him, so he's also tied. Uh, Eric, way to go. In the end, you guys are all winners. This is all about having fun and learning about tea and just, uh, you know, sipping tea together, really. So way to go, guys. It was an awesome tea, tri tea trivia time. I'm super glad that uh, the technical aspect worked out today. Let's dive in to Sunday Tea Book. Chapter 2. Do you classic of tea? What a show. I, I just love that. <laughs> Eric's, Eric's getting back to the carnivorous tea plant. I think oh, Eric wants to see a movie that, that features a, horse. A, cor a carnivorous tea plant <laughs> whose name should be what? Maybe like uh, Ping? <laughs> Is that the only Chinese name you know? No, oh, it's just my favorite. Oh. It's just okay. my favorite. That you can that you can take that as your Chinese name. Are you considering having a Chinese name? Fair, come on. Oh, okay, that's boring. Fair. Okay, uh, this is this will be an interesting session because we did drawings. I don't know if you see our Instagram yeah. stories, and I am really bad. Okay, really bad. What She's not bad. About? She's not bad. I'm probably worse. But I never she makes passed me do it. when I was in elementary school, like the drawing class. Anyways, I tried, I tried, uh, and uh, good news is um, uh, in the book, uh, Mr. Wu Jianong's book, there are, uh, some of them have the picture, so I kind of uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, copy that, but the reason for me to draw that separately so that I can quickly put some uh, measurement that's already mentioned by Lu Yu in the book, so I kind of work, add a little bit work to the pictures and some of them were not in the book, so I also draw a few. So if you see the level of drawing suddenly drop, it's because I didn't have something to, uh, you know, to, to do, copy to. Uh, we did our best. We, we, we illustrated our own translation. She drew the rough sketch, I drew the final sketch. We did our best, okay? Yeah. So please. Um, and that should give you a pretty good uh, uh, feel of uh, what are those tools roughly look like. And so that you, you kind of can skip the translation. Yeah, but I don't recommend it. Check it out. It's interesting. <laughs> you ready? Link down below. Oh, yeah. I was born ready. Was I? Yes. I'm not so sure about that. So we're, so we're going to just do the, uh, <laughs> the ultra old fashioned version. But don't worry, I might be uh, switched to this view so you can see our little Discord. So we do have a Discord channel. So um, if you're enjoying the, uh, the homemade nature of this production and all of its little glitches, go to our Discord. It's even more fun. We'll eventually put these uh, pictures on the website too, okay? Yeah, they'll be there on the translation too. So we're going to stick here where the sound is working <laughs> and we'll stop goofing around. Back to kindergarten project. Okay. Can you see that? Here, I can hold it Okay, you're in charge of that. I cannot see that. Because you can see and I can obscure my own face. This might be even a better view for them in the end. Oh, yeah? Okay. Who knows? Key thing, this is the... Uh, the stove like uh, this is the like a pretty old style uh, furnace like if mm. you go to China you will see that uh, I think one of the questions that Phil had was really good which yeah. I never thought of is he feels like these are just legs of the furnace yeah I thought there which might is, be three of them but it's actually in no, case, the, right yeah the whole mm. like a little wall of that this is the only door here to throw yeah. in the firewood which I yeah. you can see is down there and uh, Louis right. says no chimney one of the reasons for no chimney is to uh, concentrate the heat because of the wood fire temperature and everything. So this whole structure, when you uh, read about it, why it has to be sealed with the mud. Uh, mud between the steamer and the pot that boils water, also uh, uh, retain the heat. Mm -hmm. Make sure all the heat are there because with the uh, the water is just a hundred degree. So the whole design you can see is pretty concentrated on retain all the heat. Mm -hmm. So that when we put steam, uh, leaves there to steam, uh, it can be as efficient as possible. Yeah. And uh, the steamer that he mentioned it can be earthenware, earthenware or wood. This is an illustration of a wood ones, just slack, wood slack with a belt, which you can see you know, nowadays we might use that for 
like a barrel or whatever. Barrel, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You even have that style of uh, yeah, it's basically, flower pot. Yeah. If you steam dumplings or whatever at home, it's basically a gigantic uh, dumpling steamer, mm. right? Yeah. However, unlike the dumpling steamer at home, which has a little spot for your dumplings built in, Ta -da -da -da. this one has uh, a little basket that goes in so you can check out the leaves, pull them in and out. I think that's good, right? Yeah. Sorry, no, didn't mean to. Cover we'll get a close full up. face. There we go. Now we let you back in. So this thing goes inside, okay? Uh, the little bamboo stick and uh, the mesh. Oh, sorry, I forgot. The mesh, raft-like. So I was wondering, maybe it shouldn't be like uh, this sift-like looking. Maybe it should be just the straight ones that right, tie right. together, because raft, a bamboo raft. Right, which we actually have mm. a steamer, uh, a dumpling steamer. I'm over here. We actually right. have a dumpling steamer like that that has wood slats. It doesn't have mesh. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. So yeah, that maybe yeah. that's what they mean by raft like. Mm -hmm. So maybe need some work on this picture. But anyway, that's the gist of where you put the leaves on top of this mesh and put that in and that's how you steam and use the little uh, thing goes up. If you're not very familiar with the bamboo, you might not know that bamboo could have some rigidness if you use the man, the the older part of it, it can be almost like a wooden texture. That's why this one can be a stick like. Oh yeah. And here you can wave, wave, weave, weave with the bamboo because the bamboo can also slice be into sliced really into thin strips. Yeah. The thin reeds. Yeah, which wood yeah. cannot. So they uh, they are yeah. similar, but there's uh, some difference. I remember in Yuna seeing those gentlemen uh, converting bamboo into mm. reed, into long reed strips with a super sharp knife. That was like, whoa, mm. that looks so dangerous. And Eric asks, does it ever get smoky? Uh, just, I think that's the very good, good question. Good question, yeah. I think the in terms of smoky first is wood, right? If it's wet wood, it's more smoky uh, than dry wood. Than properly dried wood. Second is the airflow. But based on the, the furnace, how open it is, I don't think it would be very lack of uh, oxygen. Yeah. So in terms of smoky, it wouldn't be as much. I want to point out something too that I learned while I was on it, again on tea trip in China, yeah. watching roasters and just yeah. our hosts in Yunnan would cook over an open fire. Uh, the roaster, and it wasn't uh, very smoky either, eh? No, and that's my point is we might think of fire as just like you light a fire and that's a fire. Fire, what I learned there is maybe it's not as technical as tea making, but controlling a fire and controlling a fire's temperature is a craft. And mm. these people knew that, knew in the Tang Dynasty, I'm sure they knew that craft. And the people there now today, if they need to, they know that craft. Mm. It's not something we know as modern people. We don't mm. use fire. But they're able to, it was, uh, it blew my mind to watch them cook on an open fire. Like that's their cook almost every, had a stove over in the corner right there. Nah. Open fire tastes better. Wow, mind blowing. <laughs> right. So probably not because mm. they, these they know fire. Mm. It's just all the times. If we were born in that time, that's our skills. Everybody Nowadays we know how to touch yeah. screen. Just different set of skills. Yeah, it'd be like tying your shoes. You got to learn it to yeah. survive. Next is up to you guys to tell us which drawing is better. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> okay, you got to give them some background. <laughs> for this. So these are these are the tool. This is the tool that is used to manipulate the leaves while they're in the steamer, I think? When they get out. When, when they, they get, get out, out of the steamer. So it's supposed to be a, a wooden, a fork made Yeah, that, of, that uh, wood is called a paper mulberry wood. It's a, a really a native, native southern uh, tree. Yeah, and, and right. it's made of a branch and it would naturally have these three prongs. So This I mean, is two industrial forks. I see that as a fork, that's not a tree branch. So I think this is a tree branch. Anyway, it could be. I Let would, us know. I would select a branch that looks like this. Yeah, you guys should. You want a one. fork or you want a chicken feed? Which fork do you think <laughs> would be easier to manipulate the uh, the tea leaves after they're out of the steamer with? Would it be the uh, Would it be this one, or would it be this one here? I'm blocking my face. Okay. And in the meantime, I'll since she likes the chicken foot, I'll hold that one up. So is that enough for the chicken? Pork? That's it. Okay, but we need you to vote because uh, this is, I got a lot hanging on this, okay? So okay. vote for my fork, please, which was the really nice. A branch could still look like that. It's just how you whittle it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, next, 
That's like a really and we have a transition. Pro transition. <laughs> this is a mortal pestle. What mm -hmm. they use after the tea gets steamed, uh, put in this to have a little, uh, not a grinding motion, more of a mm. churning or a grind. Crushing. Crushing. Pound mm -hmm. or that kind of a motion, and uh, this one has the drawing in the book, which comes with the two little person beside. Uh, this is too much for me. I cannot draw. Person. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't so, draw the people, but, <laughs> but we put the arrows here to yeah. indicate that the, that Up and the motion, down motion is smashing. And it's a bit like an old style uh, mortal pestle, like different than what we would have in our kitchen yeah, to this grind. Yeah, this would be this four stuff. or five feet. Big, this yeah. big thing is think like about old room. times how they decode like uh, get rid of the shell of the gram yep. that's yep. the size the Corner whole person ring, doing that smash it. yeah a mm. couple people boom 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 and um yeah i was pretty shocked but that's how they like if you know oolong tea how it's bruised for black tea this is like a, a really brutal version of that just mm. violent <laughs> <laughs> next da -da 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 -da. oh eric Are voted for the chicken some? feet I know, right? That looks so realistic. Come on, everybody else. Give me the vote for the good fork, please. Work with me here, Eric. Okay, transitioning in. There we go. Sorry. Try okay. Get, I want to be close enough for them to read the words initially. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. I forgot about that. So, key word here, this is like an anvil. Like, a, 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 you know, you, uh, he mentioned rock or use the tree. A certain tree trunk, but you gotta bury that in the ground, okay? So yeah, the it's gotta grass, be very immobilized. Hidden flower. Those indicates that this is in the ground, half buried no, in the ground. No. This is the stump version. It's not a stone. I think that's clear. Right, and uh, uh, you know, on top you have the mold for press. I think one little thing you might not, or sometimes when we glance over the text, we might not think is. If, if, when they're pressing the tea, why do they need to use either big stones or when it's a wood, you have to bury it. That size, a normal size of a tree trunk is also very heavy already. Yeah, it's not like it's going to move by accident. Right, so mm -hmm. I think it um, indicates a little bit of how hard they're pressing or something. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Let me know what you think. Do you think there's some more implication than just uh, right. that? And I think they probably only did one at a time, but we put three molds up there because in the book, that's how it was illustrated. And they, they did show that there were different shapes, you know, a square, circle, and some different kind of patterns. Pattern shapes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I knew an anvil could be wood, but it makes sense. I guess in a generic sense, an anvil is just something that, to you, hold that? To, that you use to form or shape uh, another object, right? So of the classic one that the coyote drops on the road, or tries to drop on the roadrunner right but which is made to make nice curves in metal and to hammer metal thing right so interesting dun, 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 dun. <laughs> i want to change change it up but yeah that's it okay next one after the tea get pressed right we steam it we uh crush it we make uh, the mold press it and now they're tea cake so the tea cake goes here to dry. I see some people translate and think this is a sieve. A sifter, a, a sieve sifter. or a sifter. Yeah, uh, no, it's a dry because the tea are already pressed into cake. There's nothing to sift. And uh, uh -huh. it's a pretty clear in the text that says for drying, just to look like a sieve. And mm. they have a pretty clear instruction about the west, the lens, and what it's made of. So it's again made with bamboo. Zoom in for the dimensions there. Yeah, if and that's the dimension. Home, this should suffice. <laughs> right. And there's that. Next up is. Da -da 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 -da. I have a little question about this. So this is, a, oh, this is almost a. This is a very technical drawing. Again, with, with dimensions, if you want to recreate one of these in your home. You can go ahead. Yeah, and you got to dig a certain width, length, um, and depth of a hole. Then build what, a... What is this? This is a roaster. It looks like a roaster, like a barbecue tea. Right, right. Right, so that's a roaster. Those skewers there are tea. That's not chicken or beef or lamb. 
Mm. That is, so this is where, so they dry it on that, on the rack we just saw, and then they give it a little roast. Then they uh, use the knife, which I, I don't see the point of drawing a knife and skewer. Then they uh, use that knife, right. imagine uh, like a, a poor pig or something, but uh, all, you know. They it's use a, an awl all, yes. to poke a hole in the cake, yes. and then they line them up on the skewer and give them a roast. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that they burn here? What is this they're burning? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Loaded question right there. Let me get into the picture. Right? We don't know exactly what they use to burn. Uh, do they use like uh, the, the wood as the previous show or do they use charcoals? Not sure. It's not clear. And they mentioned, uh, Lu Yu mentioned that there's two racks, a uh, lower and upper. So the one, the more tea goes on the lower once it gets per more dry it gets on the bottom so they also change the layer and there's that that's it just a quickly rundown of uh, the tools so this is a question for you guys now we know all the tools they use and and actually some of them do you give quite detailed uh you know um descriptions as well as uh you know the material and stuff do you think we can duplicate tang dynasty's tea louis tea cake and why if you think yes why or you more important if you think no why um yes I yeah that. That, i think so it's a, a good word or thinking shoot it into the uh into the chat mm. And let us know, do you think, because you did document quite a bit of the process, right? Right. As well as all the tools. Let's have a quick look. I saw some mm. questions cruising by. Mm -hmm. Will they ever plunge the leaves in the boiling water? I know. So plunge, you mean throw that in, like how we blanch? Mm, I think so. I think, I think so, that's right? what it means, yeah. People right. in Korea who do this for the kill grain. Oh. Mm. So far, according to the classic of tea, not really. They use the, the not plastic. I almost say plastic. I mean, basket, basket, not plastic. In that steam environment. Yes, mm. still in the steam environment. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting, right? Because we nowadays we think of pan fried tea when we think of Chinese tea, but in Lu Yu's time, it was, uh, I think, was it exclusively steaming, mm. right? Right. Uh -huh. You're right. So everything is, uh, we can try, but it will never be the same because I'm sure the plants are not the same. That's a really good answer. And uh, because of this video will be uh, uploaded to our video. So if though for those people who are not in the live and would like to answer, just comment down below. And we are going to answer that in our next episode. That's right. And yes, I really want to hear why. And Eric's reason is very good. That's a cool reason. Yeah, so let's so have just some other guesses at why we can or cannot, cannot right. um, duplicate that. All right, guys. So this has been an awesome time hanging out with you guys. It's so great to be back. Uh, great to see uh, all of you guys here again. Talking about the classic of tea is super exciting. I know many of you have been waiting for it for a while. Truth be told, so have I. I was kind of excited. We were really nervous to tackle it, but now that we're into it, I think it is, uh, it's, it's really, it's really <laughs> going to be super fascinating. Eric said no answer now, but guess what? Next episode will be still be w uh, about a chapter two. You might think we go through the content. You look at the translation. Yes. Wait, 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 we're done that thing. But by reading that, there's much more implication. Yeah. There's a bunch of cool that. stuff to talk about. So today. next episode will be still with tools talking about totally different things, all those need to be the detective work in those texts. So. And the answer to that question was, could, can we reproduce it? So guys, thank you for tuning in. Please give the video a thumbs up. For those of you that didn't at the beginning, now's your chance to say, no way, give it, but don't, you know, if you like to give it a <laughs> thumb up. And if you didn't, let us know why in a comment, if you're gonna give it the nasty thumb down, please, if you could, that'd be awesome. Um, Discord channel, we do have a Discord channel. Uh, the link is down below, which is much more easy to work with, but there's the little uh, code to get to the Discord channel right there. Um, we also have on our website uh, a magazine that we produced for our tea trips in 2018 and 2019. You can guess what happened to our tea trips in 2021, 2020, and 2022. 
Um, but anyway, so check that out, catch up with those and stay tuned for more. That's Charan Magazine. We go really deep in Charan Magazine. Deeper more sharp. <laughs> More sharp, more sharp, yeah, and more deep. More of a industrial insider things yeah. and more opinion about what's happening tea trend compared to, uh, you know, social media. So. Yeah, and as <laughs> always, we'll be back next week. You can check the tea for next week. I actually don't know what it is. I'll I should know that, but I don't. So you go ahead and check the link. Check out that tea. Check out all the teas. Pick yourself up a little basket of Sunday Tea Book tea, so you can sip along with us and we can share tasting notes live. That would be super fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning mm. in. We really appreciate it. And as always, thank you guys. Keep steeping. Keep steeping. Keep waving. <laughs>